Ah, you just can't wait for everything to turn green out there, folks. It's cold out there. Uh, oh, it's a little loud right there. Might want to adjust that real quick. Hey guys, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about the things happening this weekend and more. And today is going to be a short show. It might not be long, depending upon how long, and I ramble a lot, too, and I'm all over the place and off-topic. But let's kick things off. Uh, school board cut out earlier this week when a trustee member took it upon himself to not wear a mask per the school's policy. Uh, so um, this is what uh, Michael Gale had to say. Um, I would like the record to reflect that Trustee Gale has chosen not to wear a mask, uh, in spite of the fact that everyone else in the room is wearing a mask and that the district requires teachers and students to wear masks. Trustee Gale, could I please ask you to wear a mask? As I've stated before, Chairman, um, I'm not required to. If you could state a state code that is I'm obligated to follow, I would be more than happy to follow that. But I'm not, under, I'm not bound by any state statute whatsoever. No, but you're bound by common courtesy and personal hygiene to keep yourself to yourself. So may I ask you again, please, just for the sake of not spreading germs around the room, could you please wear a mask? You're wearing yours. I don't feel I need to wear mine. Okay, let the record reflect that Trustee Gale has refused to wear a mask. Um, so we've had a lot of pushback from the teachers, the fact that we don't enforce our our own rules. We also, Trustee Gale appeared in the press complaining that we didn't have meetings in person. So here we sit in person with Trustee Gale refusing to wear a mask. All right. So there was the uh, first instance of the meeting and uh, basically just kind of getting into it a little bit. Uh, Governor uh, Greg Forte on schools pretty much left the schools to their own devices. And Missoula has, you know, been Missoula deciding to continue the mask mandate and even go so far as to hold digital Zoom meetings only. Uh, fellow trustee uh, backed uh, Diane Lorenz, and, and uh, here's Grace Decker with her comment on um, Michael Gale. I feel it sends a terrible message to our staff and to the rest of our community that one of our trustees is not following a policy that our board has as, 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 a, as a body adopted. It's the same as if a person decided to bring a beer in here. That's against our policies, and we wouldn't stand for it. It's a policy that we've considered, discussed, voted on, and we act as a body. Um, I feel that we are out of order currently. You've called the meeting to order, but we are not in order because we are not following the policies that we as a body have set. Okay. So uh, as soon as that was mentioned, uh, they decided just to uh, cancel the meeting uh, henceforth. And so they ended the meeting um, until either Michael Gare wears a mask or is no longer part of the Board of Trustees, according to Trustee Lorenz. And this was a meeting um, in which they were decided to talk about masks and determine uh, mandates and stuff like that. But with Omicron surging, schools are in a difficult spot around the country, even on the heels of U.S. providing up to 10 million tests a month to schools starting soon, probably over the next couple months. But it, by then, it will pretty much be out. So it's, yeah, a little too late. But Omicron may not uh, be as severe as Delta. I mean, that's kind of like the what's in the zeitgeist nowadays everyone's been talking about. But those who are not vaccinated will suffer uh, a lot more than those who are not. Uh, before you start thinking one side or the other, uh, what uh, the vaccine does is help mitigate and prevent severe Ill illness. Uh, while we're getting bored of the virus, state and local police across the nation have been dropping due to COVID. Numbers reached over 300 deaths uh, alone in 2021, with an average increase of 55% from last year's. And it also broke a record of the most deaths of uh, active police officers since 1930. So almost 100 years ago since the last uh, uh, major um, uh, death in the police. Um, police unions and groups in the past year have protested the mandate. And let me break it down for you. When uh, you begin to force people to do things, there's always going to have an opposition. Nobody has done justice to promote the vaccine and not to mention we're living in a time where we'll, er we'll even be floating the idea of not helping the unvaccinated. So that's kind of, it's just kind of a shame that a lot of those extremes on both sides are putting pride up ahead of principle. And in pure numbers, uh, the U.S. is like Florida in the world at this point. Uh, numbers are peaking like crazy with uh, just 239 er cases earlier this week. And in the, uh, in the nation, and this is 239 cases in Missoula 
alone with new cases this week as well as uh, 600 to 800,000 new cases on average daily in the United States alone. So crazy numbers and many states are either doing way too much or not enough. Close, closing schools, in my opinion, is not the best way. Schools have been doing their best uh, they can and have uh, the potential of tapping into billions of dollars worth of COVID aid to help create a series of financial safety nets for public schools. And uh, for more up-to-date uh, COVID information, you can go to MissoulaInfo.com where you can find out where you can get vaccinated, you can get tested. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff going on, especially in the world. So let's kind of change topic and talk so about something more miserable. Oh, uh, Kazakhstan is in the news. Their president has allowed for security officials and their National Guard to use deadly force against their own citizens protesting. Uh, Kazakhstan's president, Kazim Jamart uh, Tavos, uh, sorry if I mispronounced that, said a local and foreign terrorists were wreaking havoc in the country and that I have given order to law enforcement to shoot to kill without warning, end quote. Uh, Kazakhstan is an energy-rich country that has had issues in their government and working rights in the region that requires intense labor with very little pay to get their uh, main export, crude oil, out and sold at a higher price for local. And so w the tipping point for this was is that they raised the rates on crude oil and gas for their local citizens, which resulted in the protests over the last weekend. Uh, not to mention uh, workers' rights and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, we're about a week into it now, and so far the U.S. leader calls for a peaceful resolution and an end to the shoot kill order. I haven't heard too much about it. Everyone just kind of moved on because everyone's obsessed with this new international incident that's happening between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, so it's a big international incident waiting to happen, an ongoing uh, staring contest between UK Ukraine and Russia, who are stacking troops along the border between the neighboring countries. Uh, Kremlin has denied any accusations about any assault while still lining up the border with more than 100,000 troops, artillery, and tanks. Uh, hackers also, just uh, earlier this week as well, hackers also tried to get into the government sensitive documents of Ukraine's government as well. My best interpretation would be Russians would be like, <clears throat> Did we just invade Ukraine? I didn't notice. Merck. Uh, the former USS USSR state, Ukraine has agreed to some terms during the breakup of the Soviet Union and was not was not to join NATO, but recent events had them considering it uh, highly. Uh, but of course, I doubt Biden would want to go to war, even though he's kind of pressuring uh, Russia to stay out of Ukraine. But, uh, you know, because we just got out of Afghanistan. And speaking of Biden, uh, going back to uh, COVID once again, is that the mandate for private businesses owners to make workers get back was thrown up by the Supreme Court. They uh, contend that OSHA did what Congress asked it to do, and here's a quote from the Supreme Court. In our view, the court's order seriously misapplies the uh, ab applicable language, uh, legal standards, the dissent state, and in doing so, it stymies uh, uh, the federal government's ability to uh, counter the unparalleled threat of that COVID-19 possessed our nation workers acting outside of its competence and without legal bias. The court displaced the judgments of government officials given the responsibility to respond to workplace health emergencies. OSHA lacks the authority to impose a vaccine or test mandate. Uh, the ruling uh, uh, holds up uh, the mandate as a significant encroachment into the lives and health of the vast number of employees. Of course, labor, uh, larger companies have opted into this approach with the vaccine or test mandate, which requires companies to track those who are vaccinated and those who are not making sure that those who are unvaccinated will be required to wear a mask. Uh, business groups and Republican legislators quickly launched challenges to OSHA mandating after, uh, the OSHA's mandate after it was announced in November and thus has created a series of lawsuits and claims that have been going around and around and around up to the Supreme Court making that final decision saying that you cannot make people do something that they don't do. Uh, you cannot walk and trip over something about COVID these days, folks. I mean... Like, the school board may by be there, be in their right to cancel the meeting, but when you see uh, casual action by the people of Missoula, especially during the sporting events at the MCPS, you, you, you gotta, like, you know, you gotta cut some people some slack overall, because um, I was at a cross-time rival game between the uh, uh, Hellgate High School boys and girls basketball featuring Hellgate going up against the cross-town rival Central High School in both games. Um, and uh, for the most part, Hellgate was always kind of known for like, okay, so a good chunk of them were in masks, and then I would go to Sentinel's home games, and I noticed like barely any masks at all. And now this is kind of like the first game where I'm noticing that not that many people are even wearing masks. You know, like there's uh, 
yeah, I mean, it was like probably about 15% of people actually wore masks in the uh, Hellgate Gymnasium. And that one's, and, and that gym's pretty tight overall. So something's got to give because we cannot uh, keep expecting people doing the same thing forever. You can't expect people to wear masks for the rest of their lives. And, you know, and most people are probably going to websites like IamRight.com just to justify these stance these days. It's kind of like, listen, live your life by your own rules, but cover your mouth when you're sick. Is that so? Is that so hard? Anyways, up next we have a art clip featuring Jody Leitner out of the Missouri Museum, and uh, here is that. And when I come back, I'm going to prejudge your movie whether it needs it or not. That'll probably be the last time you guys get to uh, really see uh, some of the art that's happening at the Resort Museum as they're transitioning from their uh, annual art auction to help raise money for the Resort Museum, free admission, free expression. Um, and yeah, I mean, they have their art auction already online, so you can go to museumartmuseum.com to find out more information about that art auction, which will be happening in February. It is will be online via digital Zoom, and so they've been doing that the last couple of years. And they uh, and they usually uh, do it at the uh, uh, university uh, university center ballroom where they have the event is more. So sorry, I'm going off script. Let's talk about some of the movies that are coming out this weekend. It's time for Pre Critic, where I prejudge a movie whether it needs it or not. Uh, I don't know. I probably stole that from somewhere. But uh, let's let's kick things off with the very first movie, Scream. Uh, so no, uh, yeah. So this one, um, Scream Five or Post West Craven, rest in peace. Uh, comes yet another Halloween reboot cool aimed to update the horror franchise for modern day audiences. So trash. Uh, join a group of youths as they navigate a TikTok type world where a killer uses untraceable landline numbers to break into the future and try to scare the next generation. I, sus I, sus I suspect equal parts meta commentary and insufferable characters whose character arc is accepting their differences in in a very different world. Um, uh, but this non wokey people will get what's coming to them. Uh, while the the dejected legacy actors Neg Neb Campbell and friends will be irritating and irredeemable. All right, so that's what you can expect from those kind of rebootable movies. Up next, we have an anime, Ugh, anime baby. Yet another anime trying to get in good with Western audiences as their popularity continues to climb. This movie is called Bell. It's basically like Sword Art Online, but more about the depression depression of being stuck in the real world while also uh, the haunting reality of being able to thrive in a made up world. This is the hey, this is about virtual re reality and full immersion kind of VR type stuff. But isn't reality what you make of it? Anyways, watch a schoolgirl, check. Anxiety, check. She's in school, check. Um, and uh, something seriously happens in the VR that makes her challenge the way she lives her life. It's very coming of age, and most animes are coming of age, like endlessly coming of age. Up next, we have Italian studies. Losing your mind is not good, but forgetting who you are can be even worse. Imagine that being in the uh, Manhattan, New York area. Uh, sure, Italian studies can be a bit much, but when you are in New York and want to hang out with college kids who pay way too much for New York college, look it up, and hang out with an am amnesiac lady close to their age. Well, not quite. She's a writer. So, like, uh, this is pretty indie film. So, uh, all indie films have to have some kind of reporter, writer, or struggling, pr or some kind of struggling profession. 
uh, and you always watch a young teenager uh, help this vulnerable woman in hopes of romance or whatever. Uh, it kind of seems weird, but it's kind of sketchy, but I guess since he's younger, it's okay to take advantage of her. Enjoy your weird January of terrible movies and look forward to yet another Bruce Willis movie at some point this month, because, hey, he's been doing a lot of movies. All right. Oh, yeah, this is uh, slowly lurching. It's the Morbius movie. Who's excited for Morbius? Not me. He's a living vampire, and like Spider-Man, he was bitten by a radioactive vampire bat. And so, coming out next Friday, up. Uh, okay, I mean, Jared Leto could just survive off of fruit, because, you know, most, most bats, especially the larger bats, actually survive off fruit. Hey, just look at those giant bats in the Philippines. They're like four feet tall, 25, 25 pounds, and have a wingspan of eight feet. It's kind of crazy, but this is not a, uh, a fruit of... Uh, a red face fox, I believe they call him, or whatever. But anyways, uh, those are your movies that are coming out this weekend, and we can expect some more uh, happening in the next couple of weeks. It kind of seems like it's endless, but hey, let's talk about uh, a movie that I redubbed over. It's from the 1946 movie. We're moving 25 years into the future from the Buster Keaton film that I did last week uh, from 1921, but here is They Made Me a Killer from 1946. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I was just a little bottle sick. And suddenly you got any customers? Yes, my dear. We got a couple of rough-looking fellows. Oh, well, this is a noir film, after all. Don't get testy with me. Get to work. All right, I just need to know what are the soup specials, what are the uh, sides for the salad, anything new that you added to the menu, what's the special for today? Well, the soup is tomato basil. Yum. The uh, special for today is a uh, tuna fish sandwich with uh, chips. And for salads, uh, no new dressing, just the sim same old, same old blue cheese and a couple of habanero vinaigrettes. Hmm, that kind of reminds me of the story of my late husband, Vinaigrette. He was a stern, stern and sour man. Man, <sighs> fine. I'll tell you later. Start, 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 throw! All right. Start, 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 throw again! All right, fellas. I got a new waitress for you. Mm. She's coming down. She's really pretty. Mm. Don't try to seduce her, okay? Oh, you can't tell us what to do. And young lady, uh -huh. be careful. Because first you whip, and then a baby. And I would know. Throw, I grew up with throw. 12 children. Throw! Come on. Throw! I like darts. Now you keep throwing those darts, so you're not going to run out of darts. Hey, why are you on a bed? And can I get a bed, too, in this cafe? No! Oh man. All right, the bed's free. You can lay down if you want to. But I want my own bed. Hey, uh, watching me play darts? You want to play Don't Don't even think about it. We got to stay sharp. This is a noir. Who knows if a police officer is going to come in oh. and uh, bust us for any reason. But since well, it's the middle of the movie, mm. I assume that the cops are not going to okay. catch us, but they're just going to be near us. You know, if you want more customers, you better start hiring more attractive waitresses. Ooh. I heard the word attractive. Well, asking you shall receive. Well, wow, she's uh, very attractive for this hole-in-the-wall restaurant. Well, it's more of a hole-in-the-wall B&B. Excuse me. Well, it's definitely a step up for my last joint. Those had two holes in the wall. I guess this place will have to do. Why are you interrupting me? <sighs> Quiet. You know, I'm thinking about opening a restaurant myself. Maybe a B&B. &B. Maybe uh, with uh, half a hole in the wall. A half a hole is still a hole. It's like anything times one is still one. What? Uh, I think you might be confusing uh, multiplication. I know arithmetic. It was part of the three R's. Although, after I learned spelling, arithmetic started with an A. It wasn't an R after all. Is that why you stopped learning math? The only reason I didn't want to learn math is because I had no desire to learn math. That and math broke my heart. How did math break your heart? Well, math had a lot of problems, Ooh. and they just couldn't solve them all. You understand that, right? Yeah, it's uh, hard to be in a relationship with a lot of problems. Well, now you know my dark secret. Well, here's a math problem for you. You and me equals m us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we better, um... <laughs> Who keeps booing us? Cops, 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 cops. What would you officers like? Well, us officers would like the special. Ask about the soup. I'm getting to it, okay? What's your soup? <laughs> Sorry about my fellow cop. But we're just trying to bring justice to a lawless land in the 1940s. Lawless. <laughs> and other things. All right, come on. Let's grab a seat. Us cops are walking in. Better not do something illegal. Ah, uh, we're just kidding. We're just having some fun. Well, so what do you want to listen to? I pushed number 16. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I got it. 
I'm going to play some generic Final Cut Pro music. Huh, well, that's a good choice. Huh, perhaps you'd like to dance with the police officer. Oh, she doesn't want to dance with you. Uh... Please excuse me. Oh, are you sure you don't want to play darts with me? I really want to play. Ugh, nobody wants to play darts with you. Will you just drop it? I'm here now. Well, now it's a movie. <laughs> have you been doing? Doing well? Well, I have an infestation of Wolverine. Not the animal, the actor. Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine. All right, boys, let's gather up. We gotta get rid of Hugh Jackman again. We uh, need some help. Hooey. Well, well, well. Hugh Jackman, isn't it? Well, yes. <laughs> you don't honestly think that we're gonna fight that guy. He has a healing factor. It's weird. You can probably tell I had a way too much fun with that one. All right, let's talk about some city council stuff happening in the city of Missoula as they are moving into more of their getting more comfortable with this, uh, the new city council members. Last Wednesday, we spoke with about the various interests in the, in the communities that encompass Missoula in terms of who chairs each of them. And so far, they are dusting off the holidays and getting the 2022 city council up to speed. And this meeting would be their first official meeting featuring the items that were reviewed in committee. So. You know, one of the big uh, kind of kickoffs for them is the uh, the expansion of the veterinary clinic, which I won't talk too much about, but, you know, it's not that sexy. So we're going to talk about some of the uh, big money that was the uh, Brownfield site. The city wants to use federal dollars to determine, determine if they want to invest in the site, and they voted in favor of it. Other than that, money for police departments are now going through for the fiscal year 2022 budget to buy equipment and hire three new officers for the city of Missoula. Uh, public hearing, more uh, expensive use of parks and in the master fee schedule for facility use, reservations, permits, and programs for 2022. Every year, without fail, they've raised in the rates, and uh, some of the uh, uh, rates over at Fort Missoula Regional Park are kind of uh, like like exponentially more per hour to use them as well. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So in terms of uh, increase in public parks, on an average about 150 per hour with the use of about 20% uh, off for uh, nonprofits and community-minded gatherings. Um, so, of course, the last one can be a bit of a stretch. So here's uh, Shirley, Kins uh, Shirley Kinsey uh, with the uh, Parks and Rec. Our annual process includes um, informing and reviewing with the user groups. Um, we, uh, we get a review and approval from the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, um, who also looks at our policies for implementing so they, um, they approved those this year. Um, the review by County Park Trails and Open Space Board, as it pertains to Fort Missoula Regional Park, that's a partnership that um, we have with the county to operate that as one park. Okay. So there was uh, uh, Shirley Kin Kinsey. Um, so uh, great stuff. you know. And so far, the money that goes into our parks in Missoula are simply for $300,000 for maintenance operations countywide. Fort Missoula Regional Park is at $217,000 and $340,000 for city costs. Over, you know, all mowing lawns, upkeep during the warmer months, and other monies come from grants, which are used for, you know, trail connectivity, new playgrounds that have uh, ADA approval type for all abilities to play. Uh, Shirley talked a little bit more about the fees uh, in terms of it being Generally, fees are a regressive system. Increasing fees generally affects those who will afford to pay the higher price. So in order to retain a, a higher level of access for those people, we continually work to maintain a robust scholarship program. And uh, the, the families and individuals basically self-identify their needs. So um, this, program, this program needs additional support um, based on, on what we've seen in the last two years. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of the last two years, you know, you know, you know basically bringing up the, the pandemic, COVID and everything, uh, ARPA has been a major source of funding and grant opportunities for the uh, parks and recreation to be able to utilize it. And one of the things that just comes to mind is BASE, which is a, uh, a place that the Missoula Parks and Rec use uh, next door, right next door to the public library in the old public library building. They uh, had a program in which uh, parents can drop off their kids. It was like a uh, in-person daycare. Um, they're uh, at the very beginning when they have the ARPA funds and moving forward with all the COVID relief money. 
uh, they are able to uh, provide free to basically cost of nothing care. And uh, a lot of times they the sliding scale would be upwards of like five to twenty dollars per day. You know that's that's pretty good for a whole day to like watch your kids and have uh, that kind of stuff. But this was like during the height of the pandemic when even daycares were closed, pre-K and all that stuff were closed, and the schools weren't letting any of the kids back. So there's there's a lot of great stuff that were uh, happening. Base still exists to this day, but from what I uh, discern from it, um, I can see that it's mostly related to uh, kind of like a couple of quick drop-ins for uh, different events here and there. Um, but so far, they've been using that as a kind of like a, a place to uh, uh, have another school, uh, like a Christian school actually moved in there recently, and they're going to be paying uh, rent, like I believe up to like four or $5,000 a month just to be able to have the, their school there. So those are just kind of things happening um, in the past, some of the things that got done in, in there as well. And uh, speaking of the Fort Missoula Regional Park, uh, they, you know, they passed the, the, the bond, I, be, I believe, back in like 2014. And so far, they allocated about $4 million from the $42 million for uh, parks and trails. So I believe it was like $1 million that went to just new playground equipment and $3 million for uh, particular grants that they can award to connect, uh, for trail connectivity and more. So there's just a lot of stuff with that as well. And the biggest jump in rates were Fort Missoula Regional Park where fees like the large soccer field from 21 an hour to $32 an hour for that very vast, large uh, system of soccer fields. And of course, they have the uh, turf field. And uh, w in which I talk about this is like the turf field is where it's kind of like an all-year uh, playground. They don't have to do much maintenance to it. It's uh, where they have like fake grass and fake turf. And this one has a rate of that like, went up from forty one fifty an hour to about fifty dollars an hour. And if you want light on, it's an additional ten dollars an hour. So Matt Loomis, during public comment, responds to this, and he says uh, that this is kind of like a uh, a downward spiral for uh, getting people excited about going to the park. Increases in parks expenses have gone up, and I'm not questioning that. But I question that parks is just being tasked with doing too much with too little. As the city grows, uh, you, you install new park trails, open space, you buy big mountains, pedestrian facilities, bridges over South Reserve, landscaping, sports fields. The number of users grows, but the budget does not grow with that. For decades, this has added undue burden on park and rec. Maintenance and operations fall behind. In some cases, these are planned, like Fort Missoula Regional Park, but the fallacy there is that nothing was budgeted for maintenance and ongoing off. So this comes out of their working budget. Most responsibilities then are just kind of dropped in Parks and Rec's lap, and they have to figure it out. Okay, and so far uh, uh, that was the public comment by uh, Matt Loomis. Um, and he you know, makes a good point because uh, with grants that go towards building new playgrounds, parks, and trails, you have nobody to maintain it. Grants are like uh, like soft money where they just like here's money for something, but it's only for this thing. But if you want money that's kind of like ongoing or anything, you'd have to set aside money from the general fund between the county and the city. Since Fort Missoula is kind of like a county citywide um, uh, park, it's not just a, a city park. But uh, he spoke in length about this in hopes that the funds the city already has should reallocate funds and come up with new policies that should not uh, be revenue driver and make fees reflect use and not uh, nece necessity. So. He also mentioned a law of diminishing returns, which is in that after some optimal level of capacity is reached, and an additional factor of producti production will uh, actually result in smaller increase in the output. So Jeff uh, Gicklehorn, conservative lands manager, res uh, responds saying that some projects have resulted in closing of large events, and this is what he had to say. We are working within the constraints of the site construction at this time. That being said, you know, this is again, a two year interim permit. The idea with the um, sort of public visioning for the site that's happening right now is that we have the ability to potentially plan a system or a site that allows users to circumnavigate the permittable area. So in the future, if there is a large scale recreation event, um, again, let's say a collegiate mountain bike race, that would only uh, affect sort of a core of the uh, property, and that users could then access portions of the site outside of it. Okay, and now that I remember uh, uh, Jeff Gucklehorn, 
He also mentions that, um, oh, I just lost it, uh, that uh, they would allocate some of the area as well. You know, if you're having those big, large events and you need only a portion of the field, but you still need a good chunk of it, they can figure out a sliding scale to help folks with those large events rather than being uh, kind of uh, constrained to uh, maintain everything while at the same time only using some things. And they want to figure out how they can uh, puzzle piece things together for different uh, groups of events, you know, have a one stop shop for one area and then have another stop. Kind of like just think about it in terms of puzzle, uh, missing puzzle pieces, um, just trying to figure out those large scale events. Um, anyways, they've, ha uh, they've happened for sure, but groups have had a harder time justifying use of parks and publicly owned properties for a lot of these events, um, just in terms of like uh, the amount of pricing and not to mention, you know, with the, the with COVID, going back to COVID again, is that resulted in a lot of just like kind of bringing it back and people putting on the brinks when it comes to hosting a lot of these large gathering events because, um, you know, the city government and uh, also Parks and Recreation are still under a lot of the scrutiny of the uh, health department, which would be very much like raising their eyebrows at certain events that would have such large gatherings of people. And so uh, per a lot of the recommendation, they would be like, okay, you're having these large gatherings, but would you be able to keep track of, you know, you know, like contacts and tracing and stuff like that? So there's just a lot of, uh, um, you know, justification just to be like, not to bother. So, uh, it, you know, that's just something I kind of want to leave you with is it's like, uh, we're kind of in a weird time too. So it's definitely hard to justify a lot of those large scale events. Even though they have done those in the past, I know that the YMCA has a lot of those soccer camp and kids uh, sporting events where they have a lot of large gatherings at uh, uh, Fort Missoula, for instance. Um, so yeah, I don't know how to I don't know how to end that particular segment. So I'm just going to move on. Uh, another public hearing was the professional veterinary service would be likely to expand, and this is the 1914 South Reserve Street to adjacent property located at 2432 North Avenue West. And of course, they sent this back to the committee. They're talking about it's going to go back and forth. This is kind of like the property up in Dearborn where they're just trying to figure out rezoning and just uh, getting permission. And since it pr falls within the purview of the city permitting a process, they're going to have to go through these meetings and have these presentations readily available. So let's talk about, um, actually, uh, this is kind of like the end of the meeting, but this is actually very interesting because Mike Nugent, the new city council member, brought up CI-121, uh, a bill that's being put through the Montana State Legislature, which will cap property taxes, uh, uh, ta uh, which will cap property tax rates to about 2% annually or uh, base it on inflation. So the whole point of this is that this whole property tax cap is to uh, kind of prevent uh, governing local governing bodies to increase property taxes based on current trends and stuff like that. And so Mike Nugent is not happy about that. Uh, thanks, Mary. I just wanted to uh, quickly call attention. There's a there's an effort at the state level to enact a constitutional initiative to change the way property taxes are levied, or, or I guess change the way houses are properties are assessed at value. And I would just caution people to um, pay attention to the details before sharing how great of an idea this might be, because nothing is free. Montana's tax system at the state level is so broken that restricting it further without better solutions is going to harm local government, city, police, parks, you name it, the levels that I don't think we understand. So I just wanted to bring attention to that because I've seen it start getting shared in some news coverage. And I think it's important that people understand it before they, before they jump out into it. Okay. So my understanding of this is to, you know, implement a, uh, a like, whoa, Nelly, when it comes to uh, adding um, more taxes annually to uh, your property tax, which in a lot of ways, uh, just thinking about just all these increases, inflation, everything that's been going on, um, I think just like limiting government uh, um, uh, funding and stuff like that. Hey, even from my own personal experience, my property tax went up from like 2500 to 3100 just within the year, and it's kind of ridiculous. Things are uh, good things about the bill, but like Mike was mentioning, there are also consequences to some of the things that, like capping taxes could do in the long run. Because you never know when you need certain things just could, because like looking at how like, you know, parks and trails do and like they, they may, you can create so many parks, but the after the fact is that somebody's going to have to maintain those parks. So a lot of ways, there's just a lot of things happening with that. And sure, you know, there's always that mindset is like, oh, why do we need parks? So what's the point of this? 
but then um, you know, there's always that uh, kind of idea. It's like, how much are we willing to set aside to invest within our own community? And then at the same time, how much am I willing to pay to uh, keep those things going on that have been going on for quite some time now? There's, it kind of feels like every time there's like an end to a bond, it either extends or there's a new bond that gets brought up. So it's it's just very weird. It's 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 very kind of a kind of touch and go. I can see the, that a lot of the local taxes, especially the ground the grassroots level are uh, better for the community, but then when you have something that's kind of like, oh, we want something that's kind of all-encompassing, like a gas tax, that it'll help everybody and it'll trickle down. And that doesn't necessarily kind of, that doesn't kind of like, kind of misses the point. I I don't know. I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but I honestly think that there's there's a better way to kind of uh, mitigate, uh, like, raising the taxes and, you know, taxation without representation, but at the same time, you shouldn't have so much representation where you're so like bored at the prospect of having all this information thrown at you at this particular time. You just need to have the brass tax and be like, how much do I have to pay? And what is this for? All right, well, I guess that's okay. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy just to kind of think about it. But I'm going to end it there. And uh, community meetings, they talked a lot of, about a lot of money going within the public works to remodel a municipal court within the city hall. And just so you know, you know, per... The state law is that we are now required to have a municipal court judge election every year. And so far, we've actually increased our two and a half judges to three full-time judges. Um, so part of this, they're creating a whole new court. And what they were using in the past is they use City Hall, uh, where they have the city council meeting to host their uh, one of their um, uh, judge proceedings and municipal court deals as well. So there's just, uh, they're trying to figure out some more space to kind of expand that as well. So that's what they're talking about, public work. You can watch that meeting on the City of Missoula's website. City of Missoula's website is a great place for you to find information about what the city's doing, permitting, heck, even even reporting a pothole. You're just like, okay, I've been driving over this pothole for the last year or so. You should report it because the uh, City of Missoula, ci.missoula.mt.us, is a great website where you can get involved with politics, find some volunteer work. Uh, even doing, uh, finding out where you can uh, do a ride along with your local police officers here in town. So this is a great re website resource for folks who want to get involved with their city government and events and more. So um, that about does it for my city council. Um, up next, we have another art clip for you guys as well. As we're getting closer and closer to the end of these particular art clips, um, we uh, will have some new art uh, being featured starting in February, hopefully. And so without further ado, here is uh, Neil Ambrose Smith. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some events, what you can do this weekend. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Kicking things off with events here in the library. If you're interested in uh, 
having your kid exposed to books and more, uh, Tiny Tales and Story Time are the best bet here at the second floor of the public library starting at 10.30 a.m. You can, uh, the program room or their Imaginarium, um, you can't miss it, you just have to ask a staff member uh, for directions. Uh, Spectrum Discovery Adventure will be on the second floor doing some all-day science from 10 to about 6 p.m. Watercolor and Yarns is going to be at noon. Uh, it's going to be on the fourth floor if people want to stitch and uh, knit their own uh, stuff or watercolor with Rob P. Um, MCAT it has afternoon workshops for Photoshop and Adobe editing. So if you're interested in learning some Photoshop or doing a little bit of editing, we do that on Friday afternoons, 3 and 4. And it's interchangeable, so we can do Photoshop, Photoshop, editing, editing, Photoshop, editing, editing, Photoshop. Uh, Young Adult Writers Group is happening at 3.15 in the afternoon as well. So if you're interested in uh, improving your writing skills and you're a teenager between the age of 16 and 19, uh, they share uh, work out loud, poems, stories, songs, rants, novels, and more. And they do this from about 3.15 to about 5.45. And then um, it's going to be on Zoom until further notice. Um, yeah, and you can find out more information by uh, contacting Dana at the Missoula, uh, Missoula Library through the uh, website at uh, MissoulaLibrary.com. A uh, special event also is happening as a fruit and veggies activities at the Missoula Public Library. Fruit and veggie activities from 11 to 12 today in the family's first classroom located on the second floor. Um, they'll be doing a taste, taste testing, matching, and we'll have special art projects for the kids. Uh, if you're interested in other things happening within the community, Life Learning Learning Center is doing an Excel uh, class uh, now. So uh, they always have these Excel classes, uh, computer learning classes. Heck, even if you want to teach, you can join the Lifelong Learning Center. It is a great program for adults looking to continue and pick up some new skills along the way. But right now, they're doing a uh, continuing pickleball indoors, continuing to improve your pickleball skills in this class. Rules and strategies will be reviewed, and you will have plenty of time to practice and play in each class. It's kind of like uh, you're. It's kind of like you're playing tennis, but with uh, uh, what's that called? Uh, uh, all I can think of is uh, badminton. It's kind of like w playing tennis, but with like badminton rules. So, yeah, it's probably more. It's more complicated than that, but it's also really easy to learn and fun to pick up. And a lot of people seem to be obsessed with it. Um, adult nights at Hearts of Fire, uh, starting at 5 p.m. Hearts of Fire Pottery and Art Studio. Take advantage of a couple hours of adult time. Bring your spouse, friends, and family, and coworkers to spend e evening pottery classes, uh, glass fusing, and do-it-yourself canvases. Uh, this is uh. Oh, Ten Spoon uh, Winery is uh, is having the, the benevolence. Uh, enjoy delicious wi uh, wine and uh, cheese while listening to the psychedelic folk music of Missoula's own band, the Benevolence. Um, good times and good vibes are sure to be had starting at 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, West Side Theater um, is going to be hosting something called Springboard 2022. It's the 11th season, and the Smorgasbord of choreogra uh, Choreography show, uh, Showcase is back. The Airbait Dance re revives his ever popular choreography. Uh, ugh, geez. Uh, interpretive Dance uh, <laughs> Showcase uh, features talented Bear Bay Dance Company members and local guest artists. Springboard celebrates the creative vision of some of the Missoula's most inspired dance makers. Eight new original dance uh, workers showcase unique. They, they, they say a lot of showcase in their synopsis. I'm, I, and they, they mentioned Springboard 2022 like three, four times during this whole thing. But, anyways, enjoy some dance, contemporary uh, dancers. Uh, apprentices and guests, you won't want to miss the interject power of the technical talent of the springboard stage, and this is going to be at West Side Theater. Um, if you want to do anything else, <laughs> you can go to the Underground. It's going to be at the Legacy Lounge. I believe it's the new uh, place inside of the former Iza, and it, this one is kind of like one of those places that are targeted towards young teenage kids. Uh, anyways, uh, Uncle Funk will be at the Union Club. I'm going to have to say that slow. Uh, Chatterbox is going to be at Monk's, um, and that's pretty much it for your Friday night. If you're interested in doing some things on Saturday morning, um, you want to uh, probably go to bed a little bit early, you can go to the uh, Sa uh, Missoula Valley Winter Market, which is at the Southgate Mall's West Entryway, and this is where you know you can buy some uh, all sorts of goods, knickknacks, and more. This is a winter market. People will do some gathering, um, and they usually host it at the mall. And Partnership for Children is doing a, a foster parent uh, initiative and so become a licensed foster care provider um, is no small task. It is a process that requires ample consideration, the ability to look inward at yourself and your current lifestyle, as well as plenty of time to attend classroom training, conduct an in-depth home study, and find just the right child for your family. Partnership for Children welcomes you to this journey. And so if you're interested in adopting a kid, 
They're doing this event at the Partnership for Children, and this happens from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday. Um, another thing that's happening as well is that MCAT is doing their tour and training, uh, kicking off at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. If you want to be able to check out equipment and be able to uh, have your own uh, film and your own movies and television shows and music videos from home and more, you can have to come to our training, learn all about us, and you'll have access to everything uh, that MCAT has to offer. Beginning Bird Watch, uh, Lee Metcalf at. Um, uh, so this is uh, Beginnings Bird Walk. So if, hey, you like birds, you want to get into bird watching, Lee Metcalf is going to be hosting this from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And this is going to be every third Saturday of every month from 1 a.m., uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Discover, identify, and reveal the aesthetics of the Bitterroot Valley landscape. Uh, all are welcome. The, m uh, the more eyes, the better chances of finding cool wildlife. We don't ignore plants and other, or, and other animals. The refugee, uh, the, the refuge has recorded over 240 species of bird. Times of day and year determine what species will be found. Most likely, every field trip will see different birds. And they'll help you learn how to identify them. So this is going to be a kind of like, uh, I guess they're trying to uh, do a class workshop to get people to help discover even more board birds. So it's like their job is to like do a, a you know, a, a Autometry? Oh God, orthopology. Uh, anyways, bird watching, so they can uh, determine more birds in their flight paths and migration patterns. And heck, they're going to start doing that every third Saturday uh, from 1 to 5 p.m. at the Lee Metcalf in the WR headquarters. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, and for more information, you can go to f uh, f v a no uh, f v autobahn dot org autobahn. That's that's right. F v Autobahn.org for more information. And of course, the link and more information about this is also on the Missoula Events website as well. So, uh, Stop Animation for Kids. Hey, if you're a kid between the ages 8 and 14, MCAT is the best spot for you guys to get involved with Stop Animation, movie making, and it is a kind of a good springboard to get involved with MCAT, especially as we're going to start advertising our summer camps and also our spring camp, which is going to be happening in March during spring break. And this is a uh, spring camp that we're going to start advertising soon, but I'm going to kind of give you the, the first little bits of information. And so far, uh, spring break is happening from uh, Monday the 21st to Friday the 25th, and that's where MCAT is going to be hosting this particular one. And we're going to try to do it from like 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So more about it later on, but so far, it's, uh, everyone's going to be like, yeah, well, let's do a camp, but we haven't really advertised it. So this is my kind of tease for the advertising. All right. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about trap release, hey, you're walking your dog in the mountains and you're just like, I'm really worried about what I should do if they get caught in a trap. So trap release workshops uh, with uh, the nonprofit Footloose Montana. They're going to be doing this at the Bitterroot uh, Public Library in Hamilton. So this is going to be on Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, what will you do if your best friend is caught in a trap? Learn how to avoid trap, first aid, trapping regulations, how to release your pet from a trap, and what to carry with you to rescue your companion animal. Live music with Sun Dog North is happening Saturday night at the Cranky House, uh, the Cranky Sam Public House at 7 p.m. Solid Snake Karaoke at West Side Lanes at 9 p.m. on Saturday. DJ Chris Moon every Saturday at the Ballander at 10 p.m. And those are your events for the weekend. There's some events happening on Sunday as well, but there's always uh, plenty of things to do. And you can find out more information by going to MissoulaEvents.net. Well, it's about time for me to wrap up my show. I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. I guess it wasn't that short of a show because I went up to 50 minutes, but I do have a tendency to ramble. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend.